All right, sixth grade. Today we're going to be starting something new. Now, since we had our test yesterday, this is going to be a new unit. This is going to be a unit involving integers. Now, this is the exact thing that we start off with in sixth grade, and there, or seventh grade, sorry, and there are still a lot of students who struggle with this. Okay? And um, what I'm going to do, I'm thinking that what I'll do is I'll get a number line and put it up here. That way we can have a visual representation of what's going on with integers. So we're going to paraphrase this when you're going to write down um, what I will learn today. It says, understand that positive and negative numbers are used together to describe quantities. There's a word that we could use more often. Having opposite directions or values. For example, tem temperature above, below zero, elevation above, below sea level. Credits, that's positive, negative, electric charge. Use a positive and negative numbers to represent quantities in real-world context and explaining the meaning of zero in each situation. So you can paraphrase that by saying, understand that positive and negative numbers are used together in opposite directions. So you just do, let's do highlighter. Yeah. There. You can just write down what it says there if you can see that. Understand that positive and negative numbers are used together having opposite directions or values. So you have a worksheet there that talks about the uh, number system there. And we're essentially going to be working through these, uh, this information where it says rational numbers are integers and fractions, positive integers, negative integers, positive fractions, and negative fractions. And it's going to be the information that goes right here. So on that spot, in that opening thing where it says positive integers, I want you to write what it says here, which is our, there are opposites of positive integers, oops, sorry, no, wrong one. <laughs> positive integers are whole numbers greater than zero. Whole numbers greater than zero. They're written without a positive sign. You don't have to. You don't have to write a positive sign. Then the next spot was the negative integers. And those are opposites of positive integers written with the negative sign. Because the word negative actually means opposite. Yes, ma'am? Opposite of positive, in, positive integers. Opposite of positive integers. So we've got those two down, and it says, you can use a number line to display numbers called integers, as a set of integers include counting numbers, their opposites, and zero. So as we've got here, we've got the number zero in the middle of our number line. And as you go three up, you're at positive three. From zero, when you go three down, you're at negative three. See how it's the opposite? Like a mirror is a mirror image, it's the opposite of you. Okay. Then is uh, the other two spots go that we have a positive fraction. The next one will make it real short. I'll drop back so we can see this. 
And that's just going to be, let's get my pen back out. Okay, the positive fractions are not, that's huge, not whole numbers. Not whole numbers greater than zero. Not whole numbers greater than zero. And then what do you think the negative fractions are going to be? Yeah, many? Close. It's still not whole numbers, but they're just less than zero. So you're going to write the same thing here as that, but it's going to be less than zero. Less than zero. I mean, less than zero. And as you know, fractions can also be written as decimals. Now, who can tell me what is a better representation of a decimal? A fraction or a decimal? A better representation, as far as to be more accurate. What is it? Decimal? What about on your quiz yesterday, or your test yesterday, where you had a point three 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 three? Is that easier to write than just having? No. One third. It's one third represents that with two Arabic numerals, whereas you go on forever. Yes, sir, Mandra. You could, but when you write this. And you write this, which would you rather multiply by or mess with if you're doing arithmetic? Yeah, the, the one third. Much easier. Much, much easier. All right. This is all up in my way. So, graphing rational numbers, graphing rational numbers and their opposites. Now, I'm recognizing that we have the zero right in the top middle there. And we are going to graph these numbers. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. On each one. So I'm going to do the first one with you. It's not beeping at me. It's weird sounding. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do this one. It's going to be 4.2 or negative 4.2 or opposite 4.2. And that's how I'd write it. So I'm going to go from 0, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, and 4.2. How far toward negative 5 is 4.2? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How far would that be if you eyeball it? Yep, about a fifth. So here is negative 4.2, and I'm going to write that right there. Negative 4.2. And in general, whenever you're doing something toward the negative, you are going to the left on a number line. So I want you to imagine that number line all the time whenever you see a negative number. It's going to be to the left of 0. It's going to be to the left of 0. Next one, we have 3.5. Yes. Go ahead. In build 3 and 4 over here, or... Ah, on the positive side, thank you. Let me get that out of there. So I'm going to go from 0, 1, 2, 3, and then right here. That's going to be positive 3.5. Now, I do, do I need to do this sign here, positive? No. No, I do not, because that's what it said in our notes. And we automatically know that when it's not negative, it's positive. Mm-hmm. Let's see, can I have someone do this here, similar to the way that I have with that? Let's go, Nikki. I like to get the guys involved, too, because the girls kind of, you know, carry this class, always raising their hand, participating, which is awesome, and I want you to continue that. But whenever one of the guys raises their hand, I'm like, hey, all right. So Nikki's starting at zero. He's popping over on six. 
seven, eight. And he goes to point seven because point seven isn't all the way to nine, but it's really close. It's really close. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good, good, good. Now this one is a little bit harder, maybe more potential for mistake. So I'm just saying that's okay. If you're willing to get it wrong, as you should be on these sorts of things, because taking small risks is a good thing and um, it's a challenge to yourself and it builds confidence. Can someone, would someone want to? Actually, um, well, I haven't seen you up there in a while. Then uh, M&M, I'm going to have you do the next one. Yes, sir. Is it this? Is it must be just the pencil sharpener. Let's see if I have a pencil. Yeah, this one should last you the rest of class. Make sure you don't steal it though, because it's not mine. Okay, can you label it for me? Good, thank you so much. So, I just found out that negative two thirds, as you should know, it's less than one. Negative two thirds is less than a whole number, so a negative integer. So she didn't go all the way to one because that would have been too far, but that's correct. It should be two thirds of the way toward negative one on the left side because it's a negative number, so right away you should know mm, I'm on the left side of zero. That is correct. Eminem? Come on up. Is this going to be your homework? No. Well, yeah, it's going to be on this topic that I'm not going to do this and have you do graphing inequalities. You know, that's why we, <laughs> that's why we do this before. Yeah. Yes, I like these. Okay. Yes, it's a different program. I'm using the Eno strip, so. If you want to erase, do the circle. Don't hit that X, but hit that circle here. And then you can erase what you did. And then, yep, and you click a pen, whatever color. What'd you do? I know you didn't do that. I'm just kidding. Okay? Yeah? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to have you uh, step back. That's a that's all right. Oh. oh, let's see if Abby. No, it's a program where you don't you can't scratch out. That's a different one. So let's see if uh, no. Don't erase anything. I want you to put what you think it is. We're gonna look at the differences to see who's right and who's wrong, and why. Can you use uh, can you use red? Let's use red. Let's act like a teacher. He's red. Yep. Yes, ma'am. So you got Abby coming up here. Not is it? Let's see. Are you? How are you holding that? How are you holding the stylus? Okay, yeah. Try again. Let's see how you're doing it. There you go. Oh, it's just really slow. Okay. So she labeled it. Abby, thank you. She, Abby labeled it between zero and one. Maddie labeled it between zero and negative one. Is the orange hash or the green or the blue? What? Red. Is that red? Oh my goodness. Orange or the red correct? Which one is it? Red. It is red because it's a positive number. So that means that it's not, it's not going to be over here. Okay? You don't have to write what I just did. All right? So thank you. I'm glad that you, you came up and got that. We are all in a better spot because you answered that way, which is good. Do you not get that yet? Positive what? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? We're getting we're getting there. Stop stop trying to time travel. Stop trying to time travel. No time travel is possible and A or and B, it's not allowed. I do not allow time travel in this classroom. Andrew. Yep, and that's where it gets complicated. Yep. Yep, we will get to that, though. 
We will get to that fun. Here are the integer words to know. This is going to be something in word problems that you're going to have to identify. So I need you to write down these in those boxes that you have in your notas. Por favor, escriben estos en sus notas. Gain, above. Deposit, up. Increase, climbing, profit. Negative integer words. Loss, below, withdraw, down, decrease, descend. Positive integer words gain. These are going to be the words that you're going to see that are going to identify what you are going to be doing with word problems and what you can see. Do you not have a pencil? Were you just going to sit here and do nothing? And Why are you not prepared for class? Okay, you said you didn't have a mind. I didn't know you just have nothing except for your brain. Well, I'm glad you did bring your brain, which is good. See if you can borrow something from somebody, because I don't have it, and you need to catch up and speak up, okay? That's a problem if you don't have something to write with. You need to solve it. Lost, below, withdraw, down, descend, and decrease. I keep thinking it's going to say decease. Well, it would be one negative one population. Speaking of which, I didn't bring my... Yes, I did bring more water. Oh. <laughs> How many more you got left there, Mr. Lead? The lead. The leader. Yeah, this is pretty old. Yes, sir. There. <laughs> Next one. Integers and their relationships to zero. Now, think of what your balance would be if you owe someone $30. $30. I want you to write down what you think that you're, what you would have. Write down what you think that you would have. What would it be, Skyler? What, well, what, um, as far as this instance that you know, what would you do as an integer to represent what you have? Negative 30. I want you to write down negative 30 there. Negative 30 bucks. You have negative $30 because you owe someone 30 bucks. Now, you could also look that as being they are down 30. Because if you owe them that, that means that you have it and they don't. Yes. Okay, they have negative 30. Or you could look at it as being you are. So if you owe them, that means that you are to negative. But you would also be at a positive, kind of, right? Because they gave you money. But you owe them that. Yes. Oh, we're going to the next one. Okay, so we're at negative 1,000 what? Chickens? Meters. Meters. Deep. So we are at negative 11,000 meters below sea level. This is level. So, Sean, I wrote something. You're chilling. You doing this? Well, that's, that's what sea level is. Did you write what I just wrote? Okay, good. The l manager. You don't need to write positive because we know that if we have a number that's not negative, it's positive. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Taylor. Taylor. 
right there. Thank you. Why would it be negative? Because we're going from we're going from sea level. We're going from sea level. That is zero. So just imagine that we have a horizontal number or a vertical number line. Okay. Here's the water. That's at 2.40. Oh. That's many hours from now. Okay, so here's a boat at sea level. This is going to be at zero deep. Then we go, I don't know, 500 or 5,000, 10,000 meters. Then we'd have about... This is going to be 11,000 meters. But the thing is, this is going to be a negative because it's below sea level. Okay? Yep. Mm -hmm. Whenever you're talking about a negative whatever, you're in reference to zero. You're not always going to start with zero, but you're in reference to the zero value. Okay? Let's see here. There we go. The lowest point in the United States of Death Valley is located 282 feet below sea level. Yep. So what's that going to be represented as, Avery? Negative because it's below. Exactly. Now, this one here can is definitely going to be a negative. Now, the other two, depending on where you're looking at, it could be positive. Okay? But this one is definitely going to be below 282. Ooh, there is no... It's going to be feet? No. It's going to be meters. It's got to be meters. Right? Yeah. Could be feet, though. It's a question mark. It's feet. The highest point. Well, let's let's use technology. No, I don't want to get into it. So, you know, have the next one. Okay, the highest point in the United States is Mount McKinley in Alaska. It is 2,500 feet above sea level. What's that one? Positive for sure. Positive. 2,500 feet. Yeah. And then birds can fly up to 500 feet. Yep, positive, yep, because it's birds flying up. Keyword here, up, keyword above, keyword below, keyword deep, keyword O. That's a debt. So I want you to circle those keywords that I just did, please. So here's what I want you to do, because they're, yeah. In that spot, if you can, I want you to answer, since there's only so much room in that spot, give an example of an integer in your life and explain what it means. I want you to give an example of a positive integer in your life, or a positive integer, and what does opposite mean when talking about an integer. So I want you to answer either this one or this one, and I do want you to say something about that one as I'm passing out your stuff. Yes, ma'am? In well, stuff that happened to you was real life. It's not a dream. That's not real life. That's what I well, how many lives are you living? It says in your life. 
in your life, not when you were playing a different role in a performance in theater. All right? So yeah, that's what you're doing right now. I want you to write that down. Take a couple minutes to do so. Okay, so we want to share with me what they have. What do you have, Abby? Um, what would you write? Nothing. You sure? Yeah. You get you get scared because I saw the microphone. Okay, somebody, nobody wants to share what they have. I need at least two people to share what they've got. Yes. Which one? Oh, really? Um, you choose. Um, I bought something from the store. Okay. And you, did you lose it? Or you were just... I didn't lose it. I just misplaced it. Gotcha. Yes. There you go. So you were in the positive or negative when you purchased something from the store? Negative, good. Yes. In 40 points a game? Good. Increase 40 points in a game. Beautiful. Yes, sir. You had your hand up. Yeah. Change your mind, Abby? Okay, what you got? Okay, so, okay, you ran out of water. You're climbing Mount Olympus. So, when you were climbing Mount Olympus, what... Is that a positive or a negative thing as far as your altitude goes? So you're climbing, going up. Is that positive or negative? Positive. positive. Good. Now, how about the amount of water that you guys had available? Is that a positive or a negative? If you went up there with a negative, because if you went up there with five bottles of water each, and then you had zero left, that's negative five bottles of water. Lucky, yeah. It's going. It, you do have zero, but you started with five. But then you had zero, so it's a negative five amount of bottles of water. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, you still have the bottles because there's no garbages. Okay. I just handed this out. It is a 5.1 study guide. This is another way. It's a condensed way. By the way, the reason why I haven't been collecting these study guides is because that is what you have to use to study. You can see these. It's right then and there, and it's also easier to find. Yes, ma'am? Like yesterday when I came up for practice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, what did I tell you about time travel? No, it's not. This is your homework right here. Okay? So, and we're going gonna to pass that out in just a minute here. So it says here, write an integer for each situation. 
we have six degrees below zero, baby. Negative, Negative six what, chickens? Uh, two Fahrenheit, good. <laughs> Negative six degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, a gain uh -oh, of 40 pounds. Bradley? Oh, 40. Plus 40, good, so I'm going to do 40 pounds. Okay, then we have, yes, oh, okay, $4, a profit of $4, so that's positive four. Let's do number six. Number six, Tommy, what do you think? Uh, You're not Tommy who just said that. Three. Negative three chickens? Feet. Negative three feet, good. Negative three feet. Okay, so that makes sense? Yeah. All right, let's look at the second section. View. Let's zoom in here a little bit. Write the integer represented by the point for each letter. Then find its opposite and its absolute value. Now, an absolute value we didn't really discuss. An absolute value is how many integers away from zero it is. Okay? That's what an absolute value is. It's how many integers away from zero. So that means that if I was going with uh, t, let's just do t here. So t... Here's our T. We are at what? So what's the, uh, what's the integer? Six, good. And how many integers away from zero is it? Six. six. So six, that's, we're good, six. It's absolute value of six. All right, then we have, let's go to Q. Where's Q? There it is, okay. Q, what value does Q have? Bradley? Negative seven. Good. Now here's the tricky part. What is the absolute value? How many integers away from zero is it, Brooke? How many? Eight? Close, close, close. Emily? Seven. It's seven away from it because you can go... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven integers away from it. Whenever you have an absolute value, it's not going to have a negative. Okay? It's not going to have a negative. It's not going to have a negative. Two, three, one, two, yes, three, four, five, six. After you pass that back, yes, two. Three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's look at the homework. We'll do uh, a bit of an example here. So here's the homework. It said. Why did the bank robber cross the road? Just kidding. Why, why did the bank robber run home and jump in the shower? We are going to write, we are going to write an integer to solve each e situation. Find the point on the number line that corresponds to the integer. Write the letter of the exercise above the number line at that point. So let's do H. Whoa. Let's do H. So we have three. Shh, we have three units left of zero. Now we have to think of something here. What is a unit in this situation? What is what is a unit? Yeah, it's an integer. Okay, our units are integer because we don't have this. Isn't um, these fifteen negative fifteen ten five zero? Okay, so we're gonna. We don't know what it is. We'll just, it's an integer, so it's a unit. Three units to the left of zero. Kobe, where am I going to end up? <coughs> Negative three. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and I'm going to put an H right there. Okay? So I'm done with that one. How about number w? Mm, w. W. Can someone tell me where they think that is? Hemkin, where are we going to go with that? What's that? Negative nine. Negative nine, exactly, because the identifying word here is withdrawal. 
you're going to have your notes out with those keywords that we wrote down a little bit ago. So we're going to be at negative 9. So right here is going to be W. Okay? And that is how we are doing that. And we have nine minutes to work on this, so I expect you all to be able to finish this. That's all she wrote. Take care. Have a good one. You guys are great.